My name is Hannah, and this is my Year of Less Stuff. Hey y'all, so welcome to the final installment in what has turned out to be kind of a protracted series. It's been really interesting and weird. This is, I'm, I've been filming a lot of it today. I filmed um, like the whole, all of the declutters and filming them all, all in a row. It's interesting because when I started this project, I, I just picked out a handful of my makeup, just the stuff that I feel like I'm totally confident that I would spend my own money on to buy again if I lost everything. When I, I pulled that small collection and I started using only it, it was so wonderful. It was really uh, lovely to have so much space on my vanity. It was lovely to have such an easy decision-making process in the morning when I was deciding what kind of makeup to put on. At the beginning, I thought I like wouldn't miss the rest of my makeup at all. I was like, I'm a minimalist for real. Like this is great. This is the life I want. But it wasn't very long before I started actually missing some of my other makeup. It was like a week, <laughs> and then I pulled the things that I'd been missing. And then it wasn't very long before I started kind of missing more. And it, and it got to the point where I wasn't just missing specific items. I was actually missing like having the, the choice. Like I was missing the sense of abundance. I was missing the variety and the way in which variety can inspire. And I know myself, I know that too much of a good thing is too much for me. Like having too much lipstick, as much as I love lipstick, makes me feel overwhelmed. So I'm working on um, holding that line where I have like enough to make me feel like I'm happy about the state of my stuff, like in that I like, I can indulge in my love of makeup, which is real and which is something that I don't think is a bad thing. I can indulge in that and in my love of variety, but without passing that point where I have so much that I feel overwhelmed or I feel like I'm drowning in stuff, that I do feel like I've been past that point with a lot of stuff in my life and that's why I'm doing this year of less stuff. And I also wanted to make sure that I didn't just get more and more and more stuff as the year wore on, especially given that I do receive PR to review and I do buy stuff to review as well. These are just all of like the questions that I'm balancing as the year of less stuff progresses. And this project has really like brought them all to the forefront because right now I'm having this these conflicted feelings like um, I loved having just a really small amount of makeup at the beginning but also as I go back into my makeup there isn't all that much that I immediately am like oh I don't need you anymore there was kind of a lot with eyeshadow um, but with lip products not that much so um, I'm gonna go into the rest of my products right now which are my base and face products and blushes sorry some people are having a car honking party outside here's a little primer that scooted to the back of the drawer I did pull all of the rest of my primers in the last round to um, to use up because I just didn't want to run out of the favorite that I had been using. And this one escaped me. It was in the back of the drawer. So I'm going to add that in to my group. So these are all of the base and cheek... Oh, I, I'm like getting into the meat of the video and I feel like we haven't transitioned to the meat of the video. We haven't. We're still in the introduction. Sorry, I had my battery died. I don't know what got cut off. But basically, in this video, I'm going to go through all the rest of my base products, so face, like skin, highlight, blush, everything for the cheeks and face and everything is all in here together. But I think it's gonna be pretty quick. I don't think it's gonna be as as challenging or dramatic as like the other bits of this have been. Um, so I'm also going to take this video as an opportunity to put everything back in its place where it was before I embarked on this project and then kind of like look at it all together and see how I actually feel about once again having like a robust makeup collection of a couple of hundred pieces rather than a very edited collection of like um, 20 or 30 pieces which is like what I was working with for most of the month. So let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So this is the box in which everything else resides and I'm um, looking into it, I don't know what this brush is doing here. Looking into it, there, there's nothing that immediately jumps out at me as being something that I'm like not happy to be reunited with. I just don't know if any of this is something I'm gonna get rid of, if any of these are things I'm gonna get rid of. So um, I have my two powders, one's a loose powder and one's a uh, um, compact powder. They're my only face powders and I just use them to like kill the shine a little bit if I feel like it's gotten out of control. Just one of each, that's like fine for me. I didn't really use, the, I used one today actually because it was getting a little shiny on my mouth. 
I didn't really use them this month, but I kind of didn't, I think of them as being like very utilitarian and not really like makeup products. It's so weird. I don't really think of them as like my special makeup. They're just there as tools. So they're kind of whatever for this project. And it's also not the kind of thing I ever would be tempted to buy or to keep more of if it came in PR or anything like that. There are these powder highlighters that were in here. I did kind of miss the Madison Miller Moon Dance highlight. I have the one from Samantha March now. I also have this LC one, which is like a pinky color. And I these were my only two powder highlights before, and now I have a third one because of the one that I kept from Samantha's collab. I feel like that's a little bit of a lot for me, but I also don't feel like so strongly about it right now that I feel like I need to make myself declutter one um, because frankly, I don't really want to declutter Samantha's. I've been enjoying using it so much, but um, I also really like both of these. So for now, for today, I'm, I'm fine with it the way that it is. I'm actually really excited to be reunited with some of my jelly highlighters. The Jellamy highlighter from Holica Holica, the Universal Gloss from Elysium. I feel like these promise to do something, not promise, I know what they do because I've had them for a while. They do something similar to what the Becca um, one promised, the one that I recently re recently reviewed, but they outperform it dramatically. And I feel like the way in which it let me down, these will not let me down. And so I'm glad to like have them back again and be able to incorporate them. They're not exactly liquid highlighters. They're like balm type things, like jelly balms. And um, I've been thinking of myself as only having like one liquid highlighter, only having one highlight type thing that I could mix with my blushes. But in fact, these do serve a similar purpose. For some reason, I always overlook them. And the putty highlighters as well, the Stila one and the ColourPop one can do something similar. I've been so into that super wet, super balmy wet cheek and so into mixing glossy things in with my cream blushes that I'm actually super psyched to have these back. I miss, it's like I didn't even know that I missed them, but I really did. Same with Bronze Honey, the Lumi Cheek, New Drop Lumi Cheek from Holica Holica. This is almost completely panned and I think I can probably polish it off in the next month or so. And I'm glad to see it again too. So I did miss having more of a variety of highlighting cheek products. I've been really leaning on the Charlotte Tilbury one and I'll be glad to give it a break by having these guys back. They all feel so like grungy and used and messed up and so very much my own. So very much like my old my good old boys, like my good old standard bits and pieces. I just like them. I really don't want to let go of any of them. It did occur to me to miss the Blush Subtil and Mocha Havana Shimmer as I've been going a little harder with cheeks lately and I've been using my other powder blush, the one in Miel Glacé. Um, this is the deeper one. That one takes some building if I want it to be dramatic. This is the really dramatic version. So I actually did kind of miss that and I'm glad to see it again. Same with this. I actually thought about this, the Kevin Aquan Neo Bronzer. It's a very red toned bronzer so I kind of use it like a blush. There are, there are some products in here that I thought about wistfully a couple of times, but I didn't like actively miss them enough to put them on the list and pull them. This is definitely one of those. Ah, oh, these are such great products. My Cure Wise blushes, those are another um, product that I kind of like missed. I like passively missed them. I thought wistfully of them. I looked forward to being reunited with them, even though I didn't like desperately want to pull them. And these are the last two cream blushes, the Lila B Be Lovely beautiful go-to product. I've used a ton of it. I love it. I definitely wouldn't want to give this up. And then the Physicians Formula, Formula Dewy Blush Elixir, which to be honest is the thing that I probably missed the least and am the least excited to be reunited with. But at the same time, I'll definitely use it again. Like I said in uh, an earlier video in, in this wrap-up series, there's a lot of room in my heart for blush. Let's just say that. And I'm not over here trying to like artificially constrain the number of blushes I have. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have more than I have room for in my heart. And I, I think I have room in my heart for all these guys, which is not to say that I have endless room in my heart and that I'll get, that I won't ever get to a point where I have too many. That's not true at all because it did get to that point and I did a bunch of decluttering and I don't ever want to get back to that point again. But I don't feel like what I have is too much in the blush department. I'm really into blush right now and I'm cool with this situation. So what's left are um, complexion products. So there's the, uh, the complexion rescue stick from Bare Minerals. I think that I will start using this again when I bring it up. Uh, it was kind of nice to have like a much more edited complexion situation where I was just doing literally the same thing over and over again every day. But this is a very nourishing product. It's good for my skin. It's a, 
okay match. I do need to mix it with a little color corrector, but that's the case with my other complexion product right now as well. The mineral veil from Hourglass is almost panned. So I'm gonna start using that again and finish it up. And then I think that the Touche Claw from YSL is probably also almost finished because I got it at the same time as the high cover version and I use them nearly interchangeably and that one kicked the bucket a couple of months ago. So um, two of these are almost panned and I'm gonna go ahead and see that through. And then this one's almost new. It's one little drop of diversity in my really consistent base routine and it'll be interesting to play around with reincorporating it. This is just my only foundation. It's like a real foundation, the Stay Naked one. This is the foundation that I keep for photo shoots, etc. It's a good thing to have, and um, so I'm gonna hang on to it, but you know, I haven't been using it lately and I probably won't use it for months yet. It's just, it wouldn't make sense for me to declutter it because it's the kind of thing that there might come a day when I would have to like buy something like this again. I might as well keep this one. That means that nothing is being decluttered from the, the exiled complexion things. It was a pretty reasonable collection to begin with, I feel, and I had like more than half of it up on my vanity, I feel, because I love this kind of product. You know, I only have, what, like two or three powder blushes. I'm not over here with like 20, 30 of this type of thing like I am with lipsticks and lip glosses, so I don't feel as angsty about keeping the variety uh, that I have. But let's go ahead and um, and put everything back. This has been such like a, a fractured experience spread across all of these videos, trying to decide how much of my exiled makeup I wanna keep and how much I wanna get rid of and which things and all of this stuff. And I think that maybe once I reinstate everything, I'll feel differently. Maybe not, but maybe. So I'm gonna reinstate everything mostly into that corner, which is where it goes. And then I will check back with you. All right, y'all, that's it. I put everything away. I left this drawer open so that you could kind of like see all of the blushes and the highlighters are in there. The base products are here and the glitters are here. That's what's there. And I have a lot of weird and conflicting feelings now about putting it back and about having it kind of reset to the way it was before this project with the exception of these decluttered things. So I decluttered four eyeshadow palettes and I also decluttered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight random other things. So that's 12 pieces of makeup, but you know, that's not very much. And that's not a very large percentage of my overall collection. It is a pretty large percentage of my palette collection though. So I feel like I made a significant dent in my palette collection in terms of um, like one dimensional thinking about like making my collection more minimal and like having fewer things, that being the goal of this project. If you're thinking of it that way, then eyeshadow is the realm in which I was the most successful, right? Like I, I really realized with this project that I had way more eyeshadow than I needed and I definitely had way more eyeshadow palettes than I needed even after having decluttered a couple of times at, over the past several months. So I had like a huge declutter towards the end of last year and then I had yet another one this year. And even after all of that, I realized doing this project that I still had um, like significantly more than I want to have. That wasn't the case with the rest of it. I did weed out some little bits and pieces here and there that I'm okay with parting with now that I've done this project. But for the most part, I didn't sort of feel lukewarm enough about any of the stuff I was reunited with to want to declutter it. Most of it I was happy to see again. And this, this is probably in large part because I have been so stringent about decluttering so recently, right? Um, and I've also been pretty stringent about like what I've accepted into my collection that's come via PR. So some of these things, a few of these things have come my way via PR or I purchased them because I wanted to review them or I um, purchased them with a gift card for my birthday. But a lot of these things are things that I've owned for a long time and they're standing the test of time. Um, it's basically like, this is just my collection. It almost feels like right now, this is my core collection. All of this stuff has made it through so many declutters recently that it makes sense that it would make it through 
this project as well. At the same time, though, putting it all away and putting it back where it is, where it, where it is now, where it used to be before this project, I feel like I have too much makeup, um, and I and I don't know whether that feeling is uh, coming from my actual the part of me that actually like felt happy and felt more clear headed and felt more fondness for my makeup earlier in the month when I had such a small edited collection of my vanity. I don't know if that voice is saying to me like, this is too much and less than this was better. Or if there's just this part of me that can't let go of the idea that less is like morally better. And there's part of me that's like moralizing on myself and that's being like, you are bad because you are indulging in this feeling of abundance and like you are morally low because you have more lipsticks than anyone could use. Like that i don't think that that's a voice that i want to listen to i feel like that's maybe some like deep-seated stuff from like childhood or from like reading a bunch of negative youtube comments or or just from like the perfectionist side of me the side of me that's like striving for some sort of like just like paired back clean gleaming surface of of the self that is never going to exist it's hard to tell right now i can't tell whether that voice that's saying to me like Oh my like I was putting it all back and I was like Hannah you have too much makeup like this is too much makeup I literally sitting here in this moment talking to you cannot tell whether that voice is a voice that I want to listen to or not and it might be because I've been filming for a really long time and I'm tired and it's like all scrambled together and I feel weird that I went through this whole thing and that I only ended up decluttering 12 things but at the same time I kind of understand it because I've done so many intense declutters lately so I just feel like I'm not ready to like pass judgment I'm not ready to decide um, and another thing occurred to me when I was putting this makeup away and I was having those feelings, which is that it might be that there's a, a happy medium between like the the part of me that loves what I do have and knows that I will use it all, like knows that I will get, get use out of it all. I might not be able to use every single speck of it up, but I know that I love it and I know that, that I'll use it all. And for that reason, it does it, it wouldn't make me feel good to give it away. So there's that part of myself and then there's a part of myself that really enjoyed having like only five lipsticks to choose from, really enjoyed having like a clearer surface area on top of my vanity. And I wonder if there is a way to reconcile those two things, which might be to have a new way of storing my makeup, to like store it away and to shop my stash periodically as a matter of course, like to do it as not just like as a YouTube project or as like a thing, but just to have that be like the way that I use my makeup where I have a small selection at my disposal at any one time and then I've like made a bunch of decisions in advance and it will help with the decision fatigue that can sometimes come across a person when she's like looking at 30 lipsticks and trying to decide. It might be that I use this like exile box and this other smaller collection of my vanity as a strategy going forward but that might not mean that getting rid of everything that isn't on my vanity at any given time, like fully getting rid of it and giving it away, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily the thing that would make me feel the best or that would make me the happiest. Because as I found out over the, the course of this month, I missed it. And having that data, like having done this experiment on myself and gathered that data, which is something I didn't know, because when I did the thing at the beginning of the month where I was like, uh, you know, if I started from scratch with makeup, I would only buy these four lipsticks or whatever. When I did that, that was my best guess. My best guess was that I would only buy four or five lipsticks and that I would be lipsticks and that I would be happy with that. And I was wrong. I, I mean, I don't know if I was wrong if I were having to repurchase them. So maybe I wasn't totally wrong. But if I had then gone on to say, and I think that I could happily give away all of my lipsticks except for these five, which is kind of like what I did. I sort of simulated only having those five and having given the rest away. If I had claimed that I thought that I would be really happy, just equally happy with that, and that I wouldn't miss my old lipsticks and that I wouldn't wish that I could have kept any of them. I think there's a difference between like missing one that you know is in a box right there or missing one that you gave away and wishing that you had it back. There's a difference between that and actually wanting it back so badly that you'd be willing to spend the money again, right? You know, I don't think that I would have purchased this entire collection back. I'm sure that I wouldn't. And all of the lip glosses that I missed, it doesn't mean that every time I missed one, I would have like bought it again or spent the money again. 
It's just that because I'm so fortunate to have amassed this collection, partly from buying it myself and partly from getting some of it in PR and partly from getting some of it as gifts, because I have been so fortunate to amass it, I realize that I actually really love it. And I love, I love having the variety. And I think that that was an important lesson for me to learn because um, I, I don't have to wonder now whether like even fewer things like this is my year of less stuff so I'm trying to end up with less than I started with I don't have to wonder if like even fewer things than what I have would make me way happier I kind of know that I'm actually kind of into this amount of variety and the thing that's important to me now going forward is just not letting it get back out of control again just knowing that all that much more than this maybe wouldn't make me happy. And if things come in PR that I really, really want to keep, I'm going to want to really be careful that maybe I do one in, one out with certain types of things. You know, I want to be mindful about that going forward. But I'm glad that I don't, I'm glad that I like put myself through the experience of feeling absence make the heart grow fonder. Because I think that ultimately it's going to get me to a place of like making peace with myself as a person who loves beautiful things a lot and making peace with myself as a person who's not really like a full-on minimalist about art supplies which is what I kind of think of my makeup as being. I just I don't need hundreds but I do like to have an array so once again I'm like swimming in the middle ground swimming in the gray area looking for that happy medium and uh, and that's okay. So that's kind of all I've got right now. I know that this wasn't very conclusive. Uh, it would have been like really satisfying and dramatic if at the end of this I had just been like, I'm going to declutter the entire exile box of makeup and I'm not going to keep anything. But it, it's not that simple with me. Like life isn't that simple. And it turns out I'm not that, I, I'm not like that. I actually, I like having 10 lip glosses. I'm getting to the point where I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't think I'm quite there yet because obviously I have like conflicted feelings about being someone who really like, yeah, like loves this kind of variety and abundance. It's my instinct to like shame myself for that and punish myself for that. And that is something that I'm trying to work on because I would rather just be happy about the person that I am as long as uh, I'm not letting that person like run away with herself and overspend and spend herself into financial ruin and end up buried under a pile of things that she never uses. But that isn't happening to me anymore. That's not what I'm doing. I've taken myself in hand. My habits have become healthy in that regard, like my spending habits. So then, then it's okay to like be who I am outside of that. I think it's time to end this video because I'm like getting very abstract and philosophical. And I also think that, um, you know, this just happened. I just went through all the makeup. I didn't know how it was going to go. And so it's probably going to take me some time to process it. But my end of month check-in is coming up. And I think that will probably be a really good time to reconnoiter about this project because it was like one of the main things they did this month. And by that time, I will have processed my feelings better and I'll have more to say on the topic. For now, what I can say to you is that I really appreciate you watching this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself right now so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.